This video provides a basic overview of the physical exam for patients presenting with eyelid ptosis. The exam starts with assessing the patient's general facial symmetry, eyelid position, forehead creases, and particularly in older patients, an assessment of the eyelid skin laxity, as oftentimes dermatochalasis or sagging skin is the cause of their visual obstruction. At this point, the examiner should be asking themselves several questions. Are the eyelid positions equal? As you can appreciate in this case, the right upper lid is lower than that on the left. Is the head tilted back to allow the patient to see underneath the eyelids? Are there thick forehead rytids from frontalis muscle contraction to allow the patient to elevate the eyelids? Is the upper lid crease well defined? It's often poorly defined or absent in congenital ptosis as is the case here, age-related ptosis, or as a normal finding in Asian patients. Next we measure the palpable fissure distance in primary gaze which in this case is approximately 4 to 5 millimeters on the affected side and 9 millimeters on the normal side. The marginal reflex distance, which is the distance from the corneal light reflex to the upper eyelid margin, measures approximately 3 millimeters on the normal side, but is not visible on the affected side unless we retract the affected eyelid, measuring approximately negative 2 millimeters. Then we measure the eyelid excursion. This is done by bracing the thumb on the superior orbital rim to eliminate any contribution of the frontalis muscle on eyelid elevation. The patient is then asked to look downwards where the position of the eyelid margin is marked as the starting point and then to look upward. The distance the eyelid travels is measured. On the affected side, the excursion measures approximately 2 millimeters, whereas on the unaffected eye, it measures approximately 15 millimeters, which is normal. In cases of congenital ptosis, like the one presented here, Excursion is usually almost entirely absent. Conversely, in age-related ptosis, where there is partial dehiscence of the levator aponeurosis, the excursion is usually normal. Finally, it's important to remember the basics and examine the patient's pupils and eye movements to exclude other causes of ptosis, such as meiosis with Horner syndrome or medriasis and poor eye movements with a third nerve palsy. And of course, best corrected visual acuity should also be documented. 